Yes, this is obviously an announcement we've heard a lot before about. Uh, it was something that Rishi Sunak ran on during last summer's leadership election. It's clearly something personal interest to the Prime Minister. Um, but he expects to sort of put a bit more meat on the bones later today mm. about his previously announced um, policy. He used, his terminology was bad. He should have his English uh, reviewed. I mean, to call it embarrassing that if you haven't got a basic group of maths, a bit harsh. Mm. I think so. I think it's about trying to change the culture and debate around maths in a sort of, um, you know, make it much more sexy in a public sense. Trying to talk about, you know, we've got 8 million people in the country who have a numeracy of less than nine years old. And I think the Prime Minister wants to talk about this in quite sort of punchy language for him. He often usually prefers quite technical Sorry, run that past me again. Most people in this country have a new... No, no, I said um, 8 million people in the country um, under the, have a numeracy above the level of, uh, below the level of a nine-year-old. Goodness me. So it's something they want to tackle. Obviously, you know, you compare Britain to the country in the world... Uh, we have one of the few countries that doesn't have maths until 18. Personally, I'm rather glad about that. But um, it means that people, I think, are concerned that we don't have the skills necessary to compete in the modern workforce. But world. imagine if you don't have the affinity with mathematics and you are forced beyond 16 to do that. Mm. That's hell. I mean, well, th that's going to be the whole debate, isn't it? But then, of course, we force people to do mathematics to 16. Um, and so this is something that Richard is going to be talking about later. It's something... Matt's obviously been key to him. He was previously a financier in the city. So it's going to be something that he clearly thinks very strongly about. Yeah, and look, he came out in the new year, didn't he, with his five-point plan, and mm. he talked about um, numeracy then, didn't he? And he was shot down. People were saying more than half of secondary schools aren't able to find specialist math mm. teachers. There's a huge problem with retention, recruitment within the profession. We have ongoing strikes going on. And then we've got the NEU, the National Education Union, this morning, saying this is just a distraction by the Prime Minister. What's going on? Yes, this is very much the criticism uh, which has been leveraged as the policy, which is that um, in February there was an Education Select Committee meeting where a lot of education leaders came out and criticised and said, we don't have the teachers ready to do this, we don't have the necessary skills in order to ensure people can do maths until 18. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be one we hear again and again about, particularly, of course, because teachers are going on strike next week over an uh, uh, increased pay offer. Well, ag again, I, I just think that if they have an issue with mathematics, if we can't get maths teachers then I think they should say that. They shouldn't blame everybody else or force everybody else to, to swallow maths. Now we've got a situation, as you were saying there, in the health sector, that um, the nursing union are saying the strikes are going to go on and on and on and no seeming desire from the government to settle on that one. I mean, they've settled, the post office workers have settled, the train people have mostly settled. Um, who else? Barristers, they settled. There was they? also the unison uh, workers in the health service on Friday as well. So there were these two big um, NHS-related uh, pay offers, which were there. The Unison set settled, but the Royal College of Nursing didn't. 54-46 um, voted against it. So there are going to be some sort of discussions about further nursing strikes going on. And, of course, last week we saw the junior doctors as well. So it's going to be a big theme. Of course, Richard Sinak's big idea is that he's supposedly Mr Fix-It, a guy who can come in and solve all these issues which have been left by previous prime ministers. But, of course, this poses a threat to that narrative by you know, m making sure that this industrial chaos that we saw over the kind of winter months is going to be extended into the summer as and well. How much do you think this nursing um, upset is exactly that. I mean, do you think the government had been blindsided a bit? Because they were very much lauding this as their success, weren't they? As you say, Rishi Sunak's managed to fix this particular problem. And, you know, even the leaders of the RCN had recommended to their members mm. saying, this is a good deal. And now the members have come back saying no. So, you know, this is a huge blow, isn't it? Well, yeah, I think there's some confidence within government, as you can see from some of the reports today, about actually there could be some kind of settlement further down the line, sort of a, a landing zone for both parties to get together. I mean, inflation is coming; is meant to be coming down later this year, so there's a sense of maybe do you take the offer now when it's much more justifiable given the kind of inflation rate, um, or do you try and prolong and hope to get something better? I think that if we could be seeing more of a deal on, RC, on the RCN than we could, for instance, with the British Medical Association with junior doctors, where, of course, there's still the demand for a 35% increase, whereas in this case we're talking about 5% this year and then 6% on top of that.